Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about IACS architecture. Here is the agenda of this video. First, we'll discuss IACS capabilities, followed by why to use IACS. And finally, we will understand IACS architecture. Here are the IACS capabilities. IACS provides a wizard-based data synchronization approach, which is helpful to move data between two endpoints. Real-time integration allows to develop, integrate, and deploy real-time processes and services. With cloud test data management, it is possible to expose and secure sensitive data in sandbox environments. Using cloud data quality, one can cleanse, standardize, and deduplicate the data. And the Cloud Customer 360 can be used to consolidate and visualize data. So these are some of the IACS capabilities. Now let us see the core platform services of IACS. So IACS provides real-time integration service, bulk integration service, connectors, which can be used to connect to the external sources, and also connectors SDK can be used to create custom creations. The core platform services are data synchronization, data replication, process automation, test data management, cloud data quality, cloud integration hub, and cloud B2B. And to access all these services, visual tools has been built for the technical users and self-service is that for the business users. The administration security is seamless across the platforms and the data sets can be exposed using REST API. So we do have the custom solutions built by Informatica and the partners. And also IACS provides OEM embedded solutions. So why to use IACS? So with its simple ease of use wizard, mappings and codes can be developed faster. As there is no maintenance of IT infrastructure, developers save a lot of time and can concentrate only on development. And it's all era of cloud now. And IACS provides wide range of connectors to connect to various cloud databases and applications hosted on cloud. It's a zero to minimal installation when you are using IACS. And apart from this, IACS is all on cloud, right? So it, the pricing is all, all based on consumption. So these are the some of the benefits of using IACS. Now let us understand IACS architecture. So as discussed, IACS is an IPaaS based application that is integration platform as a service based applications. So where user can access it from any machine with internet access and a web browser. So when you access IACS, the web browser connects and establishes a secure HTTP connection with the Informatica cloud services, which includes the IACS repository. So multi-tenant repository that stores various information about the tasks like you know source and target metadata. So the source here is the data where we read from, right? So source and target metadata. Target is where the data is written to. So IACS repository, so source and target metadata includes field names, data type, precision, and also other information, right? About the source and the target objects. So IACS repository also stores mappings. So when you create a data integration task, the repository stores these mappings and the transformation rules. So it also stores connection information. So of the source and target system. However, this connection information is stored in an encrypted format. And when you configure the task to run automatically using various scheduling options, so the repository stores this information regarding the schedules as well. And also IACS, repository stores logging and monitoring information. So the, the it stores the results of all the jobs which are performed in IACS. So logging and monitoring. So these are all stored in IACS repository. So it's called a multi-tenant repository as multiple users can sh share the same repository. So, and IACS is built on microservices. So these microservices can read metadata from this IACS repository and can also communicate with the front end. So this is all about the 
IACS within the about the services within the IACS, right? Now, when we submit the job, so where does the job processing happen, right? So we do have two options. Number one, so one can run the task within the Informatica cloud hosting facility. So if you license the hosted agent, so in this case, Informatica maintains the hosted agent runtime. You can see it here, right? So this hosted agent, it reads the data from the cloud applications. So the business applications like Amazon Redshift, Salesforce, LinkedIn, and so on, right? So via the HTTPS protocol. And the job is processed within the hosted agent. So this is one option. And the other option is having secure agent downloaded and installed within the customer's network, right? So secure agent takes care of processing the jobs, connecting to the on-prem data sources. You can see here on-prem data sources like SQL Server, Teradata, Oracle, and so on, right? So it can connect to these sources, data sources. And secure agent can also connect to the data sources and applications hosted on the cloud, right? And one can set up an optional proxy SAML to connect to the cloud applications. SAML is security assertion markup language, which is an open standard used for authentication and authorization. And once the jobs are processed by the secure agent, right? So it sends back the results to IACS. Secure agent can be installed either on Windows or Linux environments. But remember, you can install only one secure agent on any given physical or virtual machine. It's a good practice to install secure agent close to the data sources or in the same network as that of the data sources to avoid network latencies. When you are using secure agent at any point of time, data resets always behind the firewall except for the data preview in IACS UI. Apart from these two options of the processing, job, processing the jobs, so we do have a third option where secure agent can be installed on cloud computing services such as AWS, Azure, or GCP that is maintained by the customer. So this is all about IACS architecture. So in this video, we have discussed about IACS capabilities, why to use IACS, and finally we understood the architecture of IACS. So in the next video, we'll see how to create an IACS free trial account. So that's all for this video. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, and share it. Thanks for watching.